think there are so many different reasons. Obviously, the people um, that are behind the league, that are behind the scenes, that do so much for the league um, and growing the game. But getting sponsors, getting our games on Sportsnet, um, getting fans out to the games, I think all of those things have helped. But also, I think just looking at how many great players there are in the league and how close the teams are and how competitive the games are now. 2008, basically, you kind of just showed up at the rink when you were ready to play and you just did an on-ice warm-up and we just kind of played. Um, there wasn't much promoting of the league. I didn't really know much about it before I had Sammy calling me on the phone when I was graduating from university trying to recruit me for their team. So it's gone from that to now we have a team from China. We're traveling to China. We're going to Calgary. We have all the Olympians playing in this league and now people are starting to know who we are and why we're here and what we're doing and that we're the highest level female hockey league that you can play in. The big change, we used to bust almost every game. Uh, we used to um, you know, not have as many fans to our games. I think a lot of people are knowing what the CWHL is now. I remember when I first started to join the league, um, I would say that I'd play in the CWHL and a lot of fans had no idea what that was. They didn't know anything about professional women's hockey. I think if you talk about the CWHL now, a lot of people have heard from it. I wouldn't say everyone, but we're, we're getting known a lot more. The social media part is getting bigger. We're getting a lot more sponsors. So I, I just think also the level of play has gone higher. Uh, you're getting some quality Olympians in the league and uh, you know players that have national team experience. So within the NWHL, we are called the Toronto Arrows. Um, that particular organization was started by Ken Dufton and Colin McKenzie. Um, they were coming to the end of their careers um, and ended up selling us to Mississauga. In 2007, the owners of those teams, so who they had sold us to, um, had basically said that we're stepping away from the table and we don't want to um, uh, make the wrong decisions. And so for one year, there's going to be no league. And so us as players kind of had to decide what to do and we just really wanted a place to play. And so a bunch of us players got together and decided that we wanted um, to put together an interim league for that year. And so we created what became the CWHL. I think there's a big shift right now in that it's not about the younger player, it's about the player that has had so many opportunities. And the opportunities, you know, is one thing. What you do with the opportunities, you know, another thing. By being out here and providing something inspiring for like the girls over here, like when they get to this age and they have the opportunity to play, they'll know that something's already been established for them, right? I think just hopefully inspiring the next generation to want to play hockey and hopefully you know it can be a career for girls one day and um, I think when I was little I dreamed of playing in the NHL and you know those guys make millions but now hopefully the girls can dream of at least having a career and not having to have another job and I think if, if it comes to that and girls can actually just focus on playing hockey the level is just going to take it to a whole other level because they'll be able to really just focus on training and focus on uh, being the best players they can.